Harold Halibut is more like an art house indie film than an art house indie game. The blend of meticulously crafted handmade puppets and sets in a melancholic underwater world could be the work of Wes Anderson. So much so that if I told you that it was, I reckon a lot of you would believe me. Like Wes Anderson's films, Harold Halibut uses a lot of flat, visually striking shots and handmade miniatures to tell stories about eccentric characters in unique settings. It was hard not to play this and think of films like The Life Aquatic and Fantastic Mr. Fox, because Harold Halibut is set underwater and uses a visually striking blend of handcrafted models and 3D graphics. And I can't stress enough how stunning those visuals are. Forget ray tracing, give me that clay tracing, am I right? It looks and feels like you're playing with claymation in real time. It's eye-catching stuff. This is also developer Slowbro's first game, and apparently they originally opted to use real models and sets since none of them could use 3D modeling programs. They've been working on it since 2010 though, so it probably would have been quicker to just learn 3D modeling, but I'm glad they didn't. Beyond its visuals, Harold Halibut's setting is also an instantly intriguing one. You're on board the Fedora One, a generational colony ship which left a dying Earth to find a new home, eventually crashing onto an ocean planet. Only to find that the promising, watery planet contained no habitable landmass. And... It's been about 50 years since that crash, so many on board have only known life in this watery prison. Such as you, Harold, a main character who certainly doesn't cut any kind of heroic figure. He's a soft-spoken, downtrodden, but friendly janitor slash lab assistant who gets along with everyone, but is a bit of a pushover. Actually? Yeah? What do you need? Well, I'm having a bit of difficulty with a 3D printer. Ah! In fact, we first meet him as he's copying a fine for failing to pay the correct fare for the tube again. Which, by the way, is a literal tube that you get flushed down to move between areas of the ship. Have a pleasant journey and a fantastic day. It's a world that instantly drew me in. I wanted to know more about the Fedora One and the All Water Corporation, which is the absurd bureaucracy in charge of it. And all of those wonderfully handcrafted sets made wandering around its various areas, poking and prying into each room a real joy. I did wish there was more I could interact with though, the wonderfully tactile look of everything just made me want to pick up and play with everything. But sadly, it's mostly a case of look, but don't touch. Although I did love that the arcade has working arcade machines. There's also this great powerful sense of conspiracy running through the Fedora's halls. Everything just feels a bit shady. From the all water corporations overbearing bureaucracy to the propagandists tinge in their announcements. And thanks to all water for making this possible. There's secret organisations, and you have that slick CEO slash president's careful politicking. It all just layers on mystery and a sense that not everything is as it seems, which left me even more keen to pry into its world. But it's the people in the world, the quirky cast of characters, that pull it all together. Like Jean Moreau, the curt and distant scientist who's the closest thing Harold has to a mother. Quiet, Harold. We don't have time for your flights of fancy right now. Then there's the no-nonsense judicious major, I don't make the rules, Harold, but the rules make me. Sunny and overly friendly ex that triggers deep awkwardness in Harold. So how's life after Sunny? What have you got for me? Oh, it's, uh... Slippy, the slick ski shop salesman, who for some reason is obsessed with winter sports. It combines precise atmospheric condition synthesis with the ski sim to recreate the most lifelike experience of skiing you can dream of. Or the four identical secretaries who all have numbers for names, except for Warren. Each character felt grounded with an interesting backstory and personality, and they're brought to life with some strong performances. No, I, I didn't mean like that. You just... You're not a Jimmy Judger, you know? They're also just the right amount of absurd. They're relatable, but all just a bit off, like you might expect from people who have been trapped in this alien environment. And of course, Harold is the main star. He dreams of more from his mundane life, sick of being just a dull handyman which comes across beautifully when he finds himself alone one day and breaks out of his typical soft, monotonous delivery to belt out a brilliant, emotional, operatic musical number. At the end of the day, what more could there be to life? 
and shout out to the excellent soundtrack and use of music throughout. Im Harold's journey to find meaning and be more becomes the driving force behind the plot, which revolves around a plan to escape the planet and relaunch the Fedora. But there's just months before solar storms will hit and make it impossible to try to relaunch for another 80 years, which serves as a much needed ticking clock to add some tension to the story. And at the heart of that journey is Wii U, a member of an alien fish species who Harold finds and befriends. It's a great E.T.-esque friendship of two fish out of water types finding new meaning in life from each other. Uh, what is Bond? It's something that keeps us close together. Oh, okay. Are you holding it? No, Wii U, it's an invisible, emotional thing. Great, less to carry. But I won't talk any more about the story, since story is pretty much everything in this game. It may look like a point and click adventure, but it's an interactive story. There are a few instances where you interact with a vehicle, panel or computer, but matching plug shapes or dealing with an obscure user interface is about as close as you get to any kind of challenge or puzzle. The game is just about walking around and talking to people. You do have freedom to wander the station and talk to people outside of whatever main or side missions you have, and there's the odd inconsequential dialogue choice, but it's all walking and talking. So Harold Halibut is not quote unquote fun or challenging. If you get your gaming kicks mostly from Fortnite or Call of Duty, this may not be for you. I'm not sure I'd like your idea of fun. And to be fair, its slow, meandering pace and constant dialogue may even test more patient narrative gaming fans out there. There were definitely times where I found myself mentally checking out as I had to go back and forth and back and forth through the same corridors, talking to the same people and going to bed, waking up, and doing it all again. But I do think that was actually an intentional design choice. It's a way to help us sympathize more with the mundane, laborious world of Harold. But Agent Harrelson, that's what they pay you for. Don't let us down now. Even so though, it's a choice that often felt like it was wasting my time. I think some could argue that this could have been better served being made into a show or a film instead of a game, and I'm sure it would cut together into quite a strong one. Personally though, it's not an argument I think I'd agree with. There's just intrinsic value to interactive storytelling. Being in control of Harold just lets us more intimately connect with his life and the characters around him. And ultimately, I did find myself feeling very attached to Harold. His journey to find more meaning in life, to form deeper friendships, find happiness and his place in the world is one I think most of us can relate to. And while the story meanders and loses some momentum during the middle of its lengthy 10 plus hour runtime, its strong characters and opening act offered plenty of intrigue to spur me on, while its emotional final act left me with a memorable and unique adventure that will stick with me. It does have some rough edges, there's some clunky moments in the animations, I had some bugs where characters just disappeared, there were these glitchy artifacts in a lot of the pre-rendered cutscenes, and the pacing is often painfully slow. Oh boy, Zoya. We just wanted you to know how proud we are of you. Let me tell you a story about when I was a boy. It isn't a game for everyone. Some just won't connect with that lack of gameplay or even its characters and story. But I enjoyed my time with its cast of oddballs and grew fond of their penchant for philosophizing. Yeah, I don't think about it too much. You just have to think, what does it matter? What does what matter? No matter, no what. Ah, oh, I see. There's a wonderful earnestness and warmth to it all that just kept me coming back. And of course, those beautifully detailed handmade visuals make this a rare visual treat that's worth checking out just to see in action. The visuals might only hold your attention for so long though. But after the credits rolled, I was left feeling like I'd experienced something unique with a heartfelt story that I'm not going to forget. So if you have the patience, play. <laughs>